Hello everybody, my name is Jason Shire and I'm going to be doing a demo today in Autodesk Sketchbook. So let's get started. Uh, first what I like to do is begin by laying in my background sky. So basing your sky grads in terms of light and dark, dark and light. Thinking about the overall kind of feel of the environment from the very beginning, the get-go. It's good to start to kind of lay down a mood. And so what I'm doing here is I'm starting to think about how this environment is going to feel. It's going to be all-encompassing. It's going to be surrounding you. And what I'm doing is I'm laying in some high cliff sides and some foreground rocks and some water. And uh, it's sped up here quite a, quite a bit. Um, this was my very first demo I've ever done in Sketchbook. Uh, and also the first time I've ever used the program to in general, which I found to be uh, quite intuitive and uh, very painterly, which I tremendously enjoyed. Uh, from here, you know, you can see I'm starting to put down some value, some color, some saturation, and playing around in the green, green range and also in the aquamarines and in the teals. And overall, what I'm trying to think about here is I'm trying to think about mood. You know, laying in the light, laying in the darks, thinking about uh, the staging, the composition, and I'm starting to like kind of exercise in the idea of uh, an underside of the, the cliff there and laying in some foliage as well. So it's a lot of really quick thinking on the fly and trying to think my way through the way this uh, environment's going to feel. And right now it doesn't have to be 100% accurate in terms of what I'm trying to get after. I'm really, you know, learning the tools here and starting to see my way through this piece. And that was the fun part. It was just really, you know, getting used to the program and seeing what it can do. And uh, as a longtime Adobe Photoshop user, Autodesk Sketchbook is a very comparable program. It, it's gotten to be um, tremendously powerful. As you can see here, I have a lasso tool. I'm starting to lasso in the elements here in the foreground rocks. Uh, I downloaded a brush set that I found online and you can see here I'm using some of the scatter uh, kind of like a, a scumble texture here in the foreground and then switching in between that and a flat kind of a square brush and like I said I'm, I'm learning the brushes as I go so I'm thinking through the composition by playing with the brushes playing with the way things work from foreground to background and I know a lot of um, tools already in Photoshop, so it made it pretty easy for me to inherently think about how those things work there and try to translate them over here in Sketchbook. So again, waterfall, I had this idea of these, these overgrown, very lush kind of epic cliffs, and I'm starting to plot out where my waterfall is gonna be, where the, the rocks are gonna be, where the staging of depth is gonna be inside the piece. So it took a little of, of time to kind of do this. Uh, in all honesty, uh, the whole painting took about four and a half hours. And that's a long time for me with a painting um, that's more sketchy like this. But again, like I said, first time trying this program out and really digging it. And I can see myself using this as a, a sketching tool and um, finishing tool too as well because you can get really nice and tight with the way the, the paint feels on the canvas. So again, adding some rocks in, thinking about distance from the foreground, middle ground to the background, adding in some light on the planes there in the foreground. And thinking about those relationships, right? Those graphic no-tan reads, light to dark, dark to light, um, and all of the above. And that's the important thing. Here's a, a brush I found in that tool set where it simulates leaves and grass. So I was kind of playing around with stamping that around just to start to build up texture. And that's something that's really important is, is building up those textures. I could start to see uh, a little bit more noise, a bit more intensity and variation inside the, the scene. And as I work through it, I'm thinking about all of those things, adding some light values here in the foreground on those foreground rocks to kind of get some contrast against that water that's a bit darker. Um, you know, as I paint, I'm thinking about the wireframe of the objects that I'm painting. So I'm scaling up the brush uh, in terms of large and small. I'm also playing around with the way things feel rhythm rhythmically inside the scene. Um, atmosphere, starting to play with the lighten layer and add in some atmospheric perspective. 
and doing the same here with the rocks in the distance, trying to get them to sit back a bit by putting a cool value over them. And like I said, I haven't established lighting, but I'm putting in that Notan read, thinking about that graphic design of the overall scene. And that's something that's extremely important, guys, when you're doing any type of a painting. Think about how things are reading from a distance. Like, look back uh, as a thumbnail size. As you can see, I really haven't zoomed in very much at this point. I've kept it pretty consistently the same exact size because I want to see things from a far away read. And that's something that's extremely important at this point portion of a painting you know staying back and you know addressing uh by flipping the canvas like what i just did there that what that does is it helps me from keeping my composition lopsided and i also know that the piece is going to work in any direction it's going to work uh, left to right it's going to work right to left i'm thinking about how the atmosphere feels at different distances um, and cooling things off and then adding in warm values here in the foreground really important guys that's something to think about is how those values are reading and also how those colors are reading i want them to feel closer to us so now i'm starting to use a multiply layer to get the foreground areas to sit a bit closer to us in camera and you can go back and you can tweak in your light and darks a little bit more when you have more range to play with that's why immediately i'm putting color down on my canvas instead of just working with a blank white canvas because you have a I do, I have a tendency to go extremely dark with things or extremely light if it's just black and white. So adding in some waterfalls now. This will actually help scale a lot when you start to add in these light streaks of where the waterfalls are uh, cascading down the environment. And you can see I'm moving around the canvas quite frequently and I'm drawing and painting at the same time. That's something I try to do quite frequently, even in my professional setting, is I paint and draw consistently. So it feels like I'm working in a traditional medium. Here I am, I recropped, I'm opening up the piece to make it feel larger and a bit more vast. I felt like I was getting a little closed in by my canvas. So what I did was I cropped out the outside edges and now I'm painting out those areas. Super important when you're working on it, guys and girls, is just focus on how big you want the scope of this camera to be. Foreground element right there and the, and the foreground left to get the feeling of a rock being right next to you like you're inside the canvan canvas. Um, inside the scene now, more rocks in the background. I like scale so I am keep playing with scale cues, larger rocks, larger reeds, um, overhanging elements and uh, it's going a bit fast here. I, I did like I said paint this a bit slower but you could see the idea here. The still thinking about that light and dark read, that no tan read, mixing in the colors that are already in the environment. The local color is the color that I'm using right now. And then later on, you'll see I'll light the scene like I'm doing here. Like I just put some light down in the water, like reflected light from the sky bouncing into the water and, and causing a Fresnel effect. You know, and here we go. We're still kind of sculpting around, moving around the entire scene putting in some darker values here around us at the top. And uh, like I said, I want to, oh here, this is actually really cool. I brought in a photo just to see if photos would work in this program. And uh, I used a little bit of that photo texture just by lightening it down and then just painting out some of those, those elements. It's very subtle, but I figured out how to bring a photo in to kind of get some color in there and some variation of noise. Um, and I thought that was pretty helpful. I didn't realize that Sketchbook did that. And it's a nice update. It's very similar to Photoshop where you can b bring photos in and you could start to like kind of paint them in on a layer, which was kind of kind of nice. And again, uh, bringing in those darker values, getting those rocks to sit back further in the space, sculpting out my planes, playing with the waterfall, thinking about how that's going to feel inside the environment. And yeah, it's, uh, oh, here we go again. I was looking for another photo element. I liked that. That felt pretty cool. So I put that back in and it let it sit inside the environment. It wasn't really heavy, but just thinking about how that stuff will blend into the environment. And uh, it gets you a very quick amount of noise and detail that you wouldn't automatically think of because you have this sketch laid in so you can start using elements of real waterfalls and you know real rock and that kind of helps you set up the scene 
here's a, a little cave on the edge there that I was playing around with this like crack in the rock and there's a cave there um, playing around with color dodge a little bit seeing if I can get a bit of warm in there and a little cool contrast again detailing a bit more here trying to think about how those details work throughout the scene you know like are these uh, elements of foliage surrounding us so now I'm starting to pepper in a bit of that noise from the foliage and also on the waterfalls themselves as well thick to thin right there you can see thick to thin big medium small light medium dark high contrast the contrast of the waterfall and the light on the waterfall itself also hitting some light bright sh uh, shapes there and dark shapes right next to each other and that's what's going to get you that contrast that you need folks is to get those reeds in there as fast as possible think about how the energy of the light is cascading inside the environment that's super important and right now my palette is very green and aquamarine but you'll see I'm gonna come back in and adjust that a bit more and bring some more warms in and then some uh, more color where the focal point is which is gonna be the waterfall looking up into the chasm adding some foreground foliage and detail on the rocks sculpting in some of the design on the water and reflected light and reflected uh, elements that are surrounding the water, the body of water itself. Starting to add in some more foliage that overhangs that, that edge there on that cave. And you can see I bounce around. I'm, I'm bouncing, I'm ticking areas, ticks of shapes, ticks of light and dark in order to create uh, that sense of space. You know, constantly checking my values, constantly checking my my read. I desaturated here a bit. It was feeling a little too saturated. You can always add saturation back in. If you're feeling like everything's too bright and too saturated, I'm going for a more of a stylized look here, an animation style. So that's why things are so sweet and so bright is because I want that Miyazaki, Hayao Miyazaki feel to the environment. Again, opening up the canvas with the, with the cropping tool because I just feel like I'm still closing myself in a bit. So I'm going to go larger and larger until I feel like it's right. And also that helps you set up your details in the background. And then when you zoom in, it's going to hold that detail because you've already painted that area there where that focus is and you just keep pulling the camera out. And as you pull the camera out, you sculpt in more shape and you sculpt in more form, so on and so forth. Darker values in there using multiply to get this place to feel a little deeper down there, like it's a chasm. But I can always bring that light back if I need to, which is really cool. Adding in some overhanging rock element there on the waterfall in the background. Adding in a foreground waterfall. Uh, I like that idea of having something with energy close to the camera. So you know that this is a very active place, like you're walking next to a lot of energy happening inside the scene placing in a bit more rocks on that pathway going up the waterfall itself. So you can see, li again, tr still trying to figure out the environment a little bit. Even though I have the composition, the environment's always being figured out. And I'm thinking about how the eye travels through the piece, so I'm adding in brush strokes that kind of pull your eye through the center and then around to the outside and then kind of re-energizes the eye back towards the center once again. So there's a lot of like themes happening right here at one time. And like I said, I'm just using the same techniques I've already learned from Photoshop. And then I've noticed Corel, you know, I'm sorry, Corel, um, I noticed that Autodesk has done a good job of finding a way to make it feel very painterly. Um, and the reason why I said Corel is because Painter is very similar in that sense where you're dragging the brush and you're activating those brush strokes. And it's very interesting. I've never noticed that before with Photoshop. It doesn't really do that. Where this program has a little bit more drag to it, you feel as though you're actually painting for reals. As we zoom in here, I'm going into the background and adding in some detail now with the foliage brush set, the one set I downloaded. And... Uh, it's really cool. It's fun to zoom in because you fall into your piece a little bit here and there. But I wanted to zoom back out to see 
if I needed to correct some of those details, so on and so forth, on the waterfall. So you guys can see now, I'm at the halfway mark of my demo, and I'm already starting to detail. I'm already detailing out the elements that are in the foreground. As you can see here, on the water, I'm starting to like lock down some of those shapes. So continuing on, you can see here, one of the main things is starting to add in some atmospheric elements. So I'm starting to add in elements of the waterfall, like you saw there, the mist that comes off of the waterfall itself. And you can see I'm starting to put down a little bit of foliage. So I'm moving all around. It's I'm kind of a, a schizophrenic painter in the sense that I'm always trying to find a way to reinvestigate parts of the painting and find the pieces. And it's like a puzzle, and it's always a fight. It's never easy to do one of these paintings because I'm always trying to find where and how things are going to work. So I'm finding balances. So more atmosphere there in the background. You can see I'm pushing all of those elements f extremely far back and warming things up too as well. Flipping the canvas, making sure that my piece feels correct in both directions as I told you guys earlier. Adding in another foreground, uh, I'm sorry, middle ground rock there above us. Uh, detailing out the path. And then it, it's super important at this point to start thinking about scale. So I added in uh, a little character here just to kind of get a sense of scale. And uh, you'll see I'll zoom in here and I'll start to think about the design. I, I know that I wanted to do um, a samurai character in the scene. I wanted this to feel very like Okinawa, like rainforest Japan feeling. And uh, I just started to kind of block in this character as I go. I know I wanted to have this like overhanging cloth element over the shoulder, thinking about his hair and his top knot. And I'm just trying to find color schemes. I'm also scaling him too as well. But for me, it's more about the environment. I didn't want to design him too much. It just helps me see how big the scale of the environment is. You know, painting out uh, some of the cloth elements and then scaling them into a position that works inside the scene. And then I'll move him around too as well. But I just wanted to see how it felt. I'm like, you know what? Let's move him over. Let's get him a little bit more centered in a piece. So you're kind of seeing the environment with him adding in a little bit more color on his uh, his his Akata. Some shoulder pad elements with some color magenta color to have a color accent on there to cause you to activate that specific area. I gave him a rice paddy hat because those are awesome. <laughs> and I, I played around with the glow tool here. This is kind of fun. I, it's kind of like color dodge to the supremist. So I'm careful with it. I had to pull it down a little bit, but I wanted to get a focus around him where he's pushing light against dark super hard now. And I'm really thinking about those edges starting to harden up edges now. Some warm tones in there, adding in some rock shapes. And you'll see later on as we get a little further into the third part of this demo, you'll see a bit more foliage design. That's really important is to think about the overall shape language. And what I mean by shape language is to make sure that all parts of the painting feel consistent, like they're all meant to be there. And uh, color balancing is a little too saturated. I took it back down in saturation once again to kind of get the note to feel a little bit more natural. Playing around with overlay here to get a bit more color on the rock itself and in the area that are areas that are catching light. So I just turned down the, the opacity on that layer. And I love that look when there's dappled light inside of a space like this, because it's, it's pretty dark everywhere around the foreground. So it's now I'm starting to bring in some bright, sweet colors, because I brought everything down in terms of saturation. So those areas there will bloom. Adding in some misty, uh, design style misty uh, b bits of water that are splashing up and splashing down here on the foreground element. So there's a lot of that stuff happening now. I'm texturing that water a little bit, giving a little bit of ripple in the background using a scatter on the brush. I figured out how to scatter the brush. So I'm learning the tools 
Oh, this helped a lot was turning the rotating the canvas upside down, which was a great tool that I thought Autodesk did a great job with, where you can paint upside down and get that thing to feel a little bit more natural with those straight lines coming down. And actually, I accidentally found out a lot of tools by pressing hotkeys. And that's something I suggest you guys that are using this particular program is to play around with those hotkeys. Really try to figure out how it all works. Again, flipping it vertically. And I was playing with this dragging brush that mixes a bit, so it's very blendy. I, I like that effect that I was getting on that water where it felt like it was really falling and almost motion blurred, which was quite interesting. It was more um, soft and misty all the way throughout when I did that. And then some bouncing elements here, particles that are catching light all around the scene, like little orbs of on the lens. Uh, I like to play around with lens effects a lot, and I was trying to get those effects here in uh, Sketchbook Pro, and it was fun doing that. I time-lapsed ahead a little bit here. This is just me adding in a photo that I found, and then I just put it on a mask and brought it in. And you can see here, I darkened down the foreground a little bit more, and I played around with some of those shapes of the dark and light. Now I'm starting to really paint out the foliage. Super important thing to do is like get those elements that feel like they're really inside the environment, and it's going to really help with scale. And I actually had a image up of a, from a Miyazaki movie. I think it was My Neighbor Totoro when I was painting on my opposite screen to look at how the color and the light worked on some of these shapes and also some of the shape design that they were using on some of the foliage just to get inspired. I think it helps to have your references up. Look at other artists and then also look at film a lot. That's one thing I do quite often is I spend a lot of time studying film and you'll, you'll see how the, the light works through the lens, through the camera. Oh, here's the, the part of the demo I was talking about where I started to put splashes of color up the rock there in the center to kind of create a focus. Like he's enjoying, almost like summoning the waterfall. And this is like his sanctuary space where he can meditate and really kind of be still with the environment. And that's, that's something really cool I really enjoyed about this painting was it was actually kind of therapeutic to paint it. I was feeling like I was actually there and you know, enveloped by this space. And that's something cool about painting for me is I can go on a trip, I can go on a journey into a space that doesn't exist that I really would like to be to exist and I would love to see it in real life. And I'm sure there's places in nature that are just as cool as this. I was looking at some photo references here and there as I was working and I was seeing some neat places. But, you know, it's fun to escape into your own worlds. And this is something really fun about this painting was I was kind of escaping into my own world. Adding in some warm rock underneath there and some dark value to kind of overset the occluded areas where the leaves are overlapping each other. Although it's a very graphic read, I'm bouncing around and starting to add in a bit more foliage that way too as well. And then just pushing the darks and blending the waterfall and I'm making the face, this place feel a little bit more alive. You know, it before it was kind of a dead environment. Now it's starting to come to life when you start to add in the lily pads and the foliage and all of that stuff. It's such a great way to get that environment to feel like it's 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 alive. It has it's a real living, existing, breathing place. And so it helps to look at references. It helps to to play around with those references as much as possible. And that way, when you look at a painting that's even stylized, you, it has an accuracy to it. Oh, here's a, a shape language I was bringing in of a spiral motif on the rocks where the foliage real is almost like an eye because it's like he's using his third eye and he's meditating. So I was thinking about that while I was painting and to kind of get a little bit of visual storytelling and stylization into the environment. So I started to kind of create this like iris shape that goes around inside the environment like it's like eyes all around him maybe of his ancient ancestors and things of that nature and that's a lot of fun to do it's like think about those um stylistically think about those choices too that tell more of a narrative inside of your work 
you know, putting that all through the environment starts to make the environment feel like it's a real place. It's got a special quality about it that is only found in dreams, you know, something really unique and very intriguing. I thought it'd be neat to, I was looking at, I went to a, the Portland Japanese gardens when I was in Oregon visiting my fiance and it was really beautiful. There was these rocks that kind of spiraled around inside this garden. And I figured that that would be kind of a neat landmark that he can go to where there might be some carving on this thing or it's just covered in moss on these rocks. And it's really neat to see that kind of thing inside of an environment like this because it just adds a tremendous amount of scale to as well. So I, that's why I started to add these in. It's like, it's like his little sacred spot where he actually goes to physically. And that way he's surrounded by these rocks. They're like prayer rocks. And, you know, I was thinking about the idea of this like trifecta around him, the big, medium, small, and the spiral of, of the inf infinite around him. And it's something that I use as a motif in my paintings quite often, is to think about a motif of spirals. And it's, uh, it's the same thing that's happening with the iris. It's a circular linear shape that moves in a way around the environment. And the whole environment is like a giant eye anyway. So it's like you're continuing that motif even into the smallest shapes inside the piece. It's like you're looking through this like chasm iris and then all the elements inside the, the painting are doing that as well. So you guys can see the last minute here I've been really detailing and like finding all of the elements in the piece that are going to make this feel special. Little graveyard here for some forest sprites. Tiny graveyard would be kind of cool. Just added in some kanji on there. Just I don't even know what that means but <laughs> I try to make it look like it was uh, written text of some sort. Blasting in some warm light in a color dodge layer, flattening that down, making sure I'm saving. And then I needed to fix some of these elements here, so I started to kind of clean up some of this stuff here and there, you'll notice. Oh, I added in some trees. And these trees here are uh, just to show more scale. Honestly, like everything that you can do, people know how big trees are, and these are like smaller trees, but. You could scale them around the environment and it just makes some things feel foreground, some things feel middle ground, th some things feel background. And I thought that would be kind of neat if later, as you guys can see, I'll start to add in some fallen logs on the waterfall. And right here, you'll see it right here, I started to add in this rock element and then some falling logs there. I tried one in the foreground right here as well, it didn't work out. Then I started to add in some rock elements there on the waterfall. And I don't usually put things symmetrically in the center like that, but for some reason, it gave me a powerful feeling in terms of the environment uh, as a statement. And it also let me um, add in that, that overhanging element here that you guys are seeing, this mossy log here that has fallen over the waterfall and it feels like he can walk across that to that other rock and kind of hop up. And it's, I think from my video game background and also animation background, I'm thinking about layout where the character can move around inside the scene and I'm also trying to make it so the viewer can do that too as well. So there, um, I pushed it back in the atmosphere and I started to put some finishing touches on that to make it sit back in the space actually just turned the opacity down in, in actuality, even though um, you can see it transparent there, it actually sits back and your eye doesn't, doesn't know the difference. And I was like, oh, should I fill this thing with birds? And then I t suddenly turn, turn those birds into just drops of water. And it was, uh, was kind of interesting. It was like my eye was being brought back up again as I was painting in this part, adding in that spiral motif there, even on the log. And uh, yeah, it's fun. It's This was a really fun painting and I'm so happy that I got a chance to do this demo for Autodesk. And it, it's just really neat to, to get a chance to do this and get to use the program. And I find, I'll find myself using this a lot more often in my workflow. I'll probably do whole paintings in this for my clients and for myself. It's really a fun program. I highly recommend it to everyone. And I really hope that you guys 
get something from this demo. I, I really went through this quite fast. I only had 30 minutes to break all of this down to you, but it was a blast. It was so much fun. And I learned a whole lot during this process and I hope that you guys did too. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.